I modded Halo 1 to turn every single enemy into everyone's favorite enemy, the Rocket Flood. Then I put it on Legendary and added a few skulls to modify the game to make it even harder. Stick around to see if this challenge is even possible. This is the Halo 1 All Rocket Flood Challenge. So we start off defenseless and getting thrown around by the environmental explosions. Of course, that means I have the skulls on that make every explosion radius twice as big, and make every physics object always go flying. We are going to have a lot of Skyrim Giant moments this run. I also have a skull on that raises the AI's aggro and sight range, and one that makes them shoot more. But for now, it mostly means that the environmental explosions have taken away all my health before I've even seen an enemy. My very first death is emblematic of most of the run, dying before I see who even shot me. I squeeze by between shots and make it to Keys to receive the BFG. The first group of enemies shows me that zombies with rocket launchers may be scary, but they're not that smart. <laughs> Maybe a third of the Flood in this challenge are just gonna die on their own. Especially in this level where there's fights between them and the marines all over the place. A few jump scares happen and after learning that pre-firing corners isn't just a strategy they can use, I make it to this room. This room represents one of the level design patterns that is particularly difficult to deal with in this run. Whenever I'm entering a room with enemies all around it already, I am immediately reminded of my Halo 2 All Jackal Sniper run during the elevator room. I mean, look at this room. Any rocket shot here is going to hit something, and the explosion radius is massive. To make it through, I added a tool to my tool belt here, learning that you can shoot the ceiling to kill Flood one level above you. I test running past a few times, but I realize I'm going to have to kill basically every Flood in any interior section of this game. It didn't take too long though, and I was back to pre-firing corners to progress. I did get this checkpoint where I got to see these two Flood kill each other every single time. Comment below your headcanon for the relationship between these two. Comparatively though, this level isn't that bad, so let's continue on. The next level required a whole day of modding work to get functioning, because the Flood cannot enter the dropships at all, because they're missing the animations. I couldn't even force them in and have them just T-pose like the Halo 3 Hunters or anything. So, I settled with just spawning... Hey, those guys didn't shoot the dropship would drop them off. Th those guys, they're not, they're not shooting them. It, so they spawn when the doors open, like Why, what, that guy, but why is it, he's just running. Them in at the instant the dropship loads on the map. Why, why weren't they shooting, why? When the AI he, they're, look, they're not shooting him. It's yeah, they're not, they're not shooting him. What the hell's that? Well, this is bullshit. Why is he not shooting him? Okay, okay, I hear you down there. Yes, I know. The Flood are just running at me, and that surprised me too. Let me confirm that this is their normal AI behavior. I tested it, and the skulls aren't messing with it either. I think, if they become aware of me before they have like a perfect shot on me, they will choose to swarm me and not just shoot me. And once they get into this state where they're just running at me, they will not leave it until either I kill them or shoot them, which I can choose to do, or they get a punch off, after which they will immediately kill me like you can expect. This makes outdoor open sections almost trivial, fun even, because of the Sputnik skull. They aggro from afar, and run up to me just begging to be shot to the other side of the ring. Continuing on, I test these marines to see if they have the skills to hang with Chief. They don't. Neither do these guys. You're a sight for sore eyes, Chief. We're in a bad way. We've got wounded here. I'll call in a dropship to pick them up. Ah! No survivors, Master Chief. I get to the end of the mission and give all the marines who sadly couldn't make it the highest honor you can give a fallen soldier in the Halo universe. The 21 Bum Salute. After the service, I get into the Pelican and revel in what will be the only truly easy mission in this whole challenge. Getting the first rocket launcher on this level is a bit tough when they fly off the map more often than not now, but I managed to snag one. This section along the cliff is where I truly start to master the blast distance of the rocket launcher, something that will be very important later. If I'm even a bit too close here, I will just blast myself off the cliff. 
Ammo issues come up here when a lot of the rocket launchers fly off the map like I mentioned a second ago. Anyway, I do a quick scouting mission to see ahead, and manage to make it to the gravlift encounter. But before that, I need to get past a 15 rocket flood guarding the entrance. That took a few marines running in to kill some flood as collateral, but after that... I made it to the single most fun encounter in the game. So after the party, I make my way up. I know you won't believe me, but this first room was done on the first try. As usual, the marines did most of the work simply by existing for the few seconds that they did. And now at this point I'm going to be straight with you. The challenge is way more interesting once the flood levels start showing up, so let's speed things along here for a bit. I do a grenade jump to skip a segment here, I pre-fire corners and make it to the prison easily, Keys dies nine times for any of you interested. Next level. Beach section. Easy. Warthog section. Surprisingly hard. Time's flown into the sky. A lot. Inside. Easy. Outside. Easy. Inside. Easy. Outside. Easy. Now, into the final section of the level. I do a fun skip to get down, and then I get a checkpoint right next to a guy. That was a bit of a pickle to get out of. Now don't get me wrong, it did take me an hour to get back up to end the mission, but it's very boring footage, so let's move on. So not only am I anxious to get to the flood part of the game in the video, but I was during the run too. Assault on the Control Room is basically the mission to Betrayals from later in the game, but just much easier. So there's a skip to despawn all the enemies in the mission and still be able to beat it. I did that skip. If you want to yell at me about it, go ahead, but stay tuned for something that happens later in Two Betrayals. There's plenty of irony to come. But for now, let's get to the main course. I won't spoil anything for later in the run, but this level is so far the longest level in any of my challenges yet. Beating the Covenant from Halo 3 by about 20 minutes to be just under 9 hours. So let's get into it, shall we? The flood in the first forest area demonstrates something important to note. While I replaced every character with Rocket Flood, they keep any special AI firing targets, scripts, or behaviors that may be special to some enemies. Case in point, the guys who are just supposed to spook you in the background of the intro section here kind of broke their pathing, but you can tell that they are set to be pacifist anyway to not start a flood encounter too early, so they don't shoot me. So we can just walk by them and into the structure. The start isn't so bad, just cleaning up what's normally some scared covenant. I tried to give this guy a rocket launcher, but it didn't work, that kinda sucked. Okay, so. In Halo 2 and 3, whenever infection forms, these little guys, respond in, it didn't change every individual infection form. Instead, it kinda just spawned four or five enemies in the area around the one spawn location for the entire swarm. In Halo 1 though, Every single infection form has their own spawn point. I cannot tell you the dread that I felt when I was in the mod tools and I was changing multiple 32 enemy strong squads into Rocket Flood. But maybe I can put that sense of dread into a sense of fear. Here's a sentence no Halo player ever wants to hear. The Rocket Flood are in the walls. Halo 1 also spawns infection forms on the ceiling and the walls, and because these flood are bigger than infection forms, and 32 of them in a tiny room are a little bit cramped, they get pushed into the walls. Don't think this means they fall out of the level though, oh no, instead they just hang out in the walls and either shoot you if enough of them is poking out, or they can wiggle out of the wall if you approach them and they try and move. 
You also can't kill them with explosions in the walls. Does this sound awful enough yet? In this chamber, there are four rooms that open up with 32 infection forms each. When the door opens, yes, a lot of them die immediately, but about half of them are just going to stay in the walls and slowly and completely randomly pop out to chase you down or just shoot you immediately. You think them chasing me down may be easy to deal with too, but if they get too close, now I need to perfectly shoot far enough away from me to kill them, but not kill me, which I goddamn near perfected in this room. When the last door opens up, it's still not done. Once you cross the threshold of the door, the game spawns a new wave of infection forms to hang out in the walls or to run right at you. You won't ever clear out all of them. There will always be a leaky ceiling that drips a rocket flood every 10 seconds or so, but once it's sparse enough, you can think about going through this hallway and playing the game of which side of this tunnel do I peek to not die? Which, when you inevitably lose, you get sent back to the start of the encounter. Then, if you do choose right, or manage to pre-fire to clear out the guys on the ramp, then you need to run by without any of the flood in the walls coming loose, shooting you, or smacking you to death. Four smacks will kill you, but it feels like one smack when four of them are in the walls around you at the same time. So, after all of that, if you make it up here, you get a checkpoint. Finally. It took me about two hours to do that one room. You do not get a breather yet though, the next checkpoint took me four and a half hours. Because after that room, I could not get a checkpoint for the life of me. Not for a fair few rooms full of dozens of rocket flood. So here are the exact steps you basically need to take to get through this section. First, you kill all of the flood in this room with these two exact rocket shots, so you don't have to reload for speed and safety. You go into this buffer hallway here, and bait all the flood in the next room to come near the door. Once they're close on the radar, run away to load the previous area and despawn them. If you're lucky, you'll despawn them all at once. You can usually do it in two though. Watch out for stragglers in this room. But then, once you get through, in the next buffer hallway, these two closed doors have flood behind them that will hurt you when you run by. So aggro them to the door, and kill them through the door, which you can do here, I guess. It should take you about two minutes to accomplish all of this from the checkpoint, and about 30% of the time I made it here. Now, it actually gets hard. This room has an infection form squad in it. So, we got about three dozen dudes to deal with. Bait them by opening the door and immediately getting out of the way. This should make most of them choose to chase you instead of shoot and kill you. The length of this hallway is enough to kill the flood and survive if you shoot the wall behind them and not their bodies. That's important. Back up when you need to, use grenades, peek as many times as necessary to get as many of them to chase you as you can. This part is different every time, it's basically random, it's very prone to instant death you never know the cause of, and has about a 2 minute reset in ideal conditions, and 5 minutes on average, because the reset isn't trivial. You will think you've killed every enemy in this room after a time, but you haven't. Peek extremely carefully up and to the right. There are normally Covenant up there that have scripting to not jump down because they're scared. Killed a few of them, and now you should have cleared out the room. You should have ammo, so you should definitely do some pre-fire shots and ceiling shots of every angle just to make sure you've cleared it out. Now, this is the most important step. After all of this, it is extremely important that you don't forget which door to go out of. One of these exits here gives you a checkpoint. The other brings you to an optional encounter at a broken elevator. This footage you're seeing now is definitely just a demonstration, and not what I did the first time getting through, costing me 90 minutes. I would never forget where to go in Halo 1, okay? No one does. So go through the correct door on your first try like I did, and you get a checkpoint. Look at how excited I am when I finally get that checkpoint. 
We've spent enough time in this structure, so let's breeze by the next two hours. I was getting consistent checkpoints at this point, nothing was too tough. After making it outside, we get to see what some more of the infection form waves are going to look like. At least I can kill some while they're jumping down. Outdoor sections aren't too bad. So, let's move on to everyone's favorite level. Here's something that would have surprised even me before this run. The entirety of the library took less time than the first flood encounter on the previous level. Now maybe I actually do have Stockholm Syndrome with these challenges, but honestly, this level was the most fun in this challenge. By a lot. Maybe even the most fun in any of the challenges so far. There's plenty of vertical space to see things fly. There's plenty of things to hop off of to bait shots. There's lots of infection form waves. But this time, instead of them getting to me and killing me around corners, they chase me in these big hallways, and I can make some fireworks. I was making consistent forward progress, and encounters were all different. Some had them spawning behind me in a hallway, some were clearing out small service passages, some were wave defense in a small area with dozens of enemies. I was just having a good time solving small issues and earning each checkpoint. Please don't make fun of me for this. <laughs> One small thing to note, don't think the flood in the walls was just for the last level, they're here to stay. I do learn that you can kill them with bullets though, just not explosives. The pistol is strong enough to kill it in one shot to the toe. Now the biggest question I'll get if I don't address it is this encounter where you're stuck in a very small space with a few waves of them. It was done by just hiding in this corner and hoping enough ammo flies to you. If you peek out a little bit, you are dead. It only took me three tries, actually. Later on, I demonstrate my mastery of the rocket distance by perfectly rocket jumping through a door gap. Screw Halo 1 fall damage, though. Using that skill, I blast my way to the end of the level and move on to probably the least fun I had in a level. You'll see why. So, I know I've only addressed this late enough into the video for me to already have a few comments about it. But, this level has already been done with all Rocket Flood on YouTube before. Hidden Xperia made a great video on a mod called Project Pain that turned every enemy except Sentinels and Infection Forms into Rocket Flood. I'm not saying that that mod isn't hard as balls. Trust me, it is. It's just that mine's harder. But it's not about how hard it is, it's how you use it. And Hidden Xperia's video was great. So, with that addressed, let's get into it. It takes some fast reaction times to not die to the first few enemies, but after that and 10 quick minutes, I was at the first objective. Once I destroy it, a sentinel spawns right next to me and surprises me. I run away and head into the next section of the level. It only takes me 15 minutes to clear out the next few rooms and the first bridge because there are no infection form squads. That changes in this room, though. They are all over the place. Above you, in the walls, behind you. They can kill you through the glass, too. So now, it's starting to take a while. Directly after that room is this one. It starts with a bombardment of infection forms that spawn only when you walk halfway through the room. You can barely get back to the door in time to defend it, and after that there are still plenty in the higher up areas sneaking around, and in the walls probably. Once you manage to get by and open this door, you can see that it's still not a cakewalk getting out of this room either. I even make it through once and panic shoot behind me, setting off a frag grenade on the ground next to me. Woo! That room took me a long time, but I got it and made it to this bridge. You might notice that these bridge designs are the same as in the Covenant in Halo 3 that I died on for three hours. I will feel a similar amount of pain on this bridge too. It doesn't seem too bad until I get to the end and these guys show up. They only spawn when you are right next to them, and it is almost impossible to survive. This is when I come up with a plan that I think is genius. I jump to the other bridge and just skip the trigger point. I continue on and the enemies aren't spawning. I get very far into the level before I realize that the banshees I need didn't spawn, and the ones that did were for enemies, and not enterable by me. 
I can't make progress, and if I'm being honest, I feel bad about skipping this level too. So I make the few minute walk back to the bridge to see if I can manage anything. I get there, spawn them, and die. Needing to do the long walk back for any attempt I want to make at these guys to restart the level script. So I bite the bullet and restart the level from the beginning. If you remember, after skipping half of Attack on the Control Room, which this level is a reskin of, I now need to do half of this level twice anyway. I decided to make the most out of this though, and decided that I was going to try and play through the whole level with as few breaks in the gameplay as possible, so I can upload an unlisted video of the whole level uncut for you guys to watch. Usually, I will take bathroom breaks, pause and break up the recording to eat or just take a sanity break, but this time I powered through it and only paused once. So, you can watch that in the card on screen, or in the description, it has some light commentary throughout. Anyway, it wasn't awful getting back, it only took an hour-ish. Now, to actually deal with these guys. Here's my strategy. I used the other bridge to get to the other side of the trigger again, but this time, I learned exactly where it is. And then, I positioned myself, and launched myself down the bridge, hoping I don't die, spawning them in, but being far enough away. Then, I hope I could kill all of them. Eventually, it worked, and I made a buy. The next sections weren't too bad. This elevator was terrifying on the first viewing, though, but actually only required one well-timed shot. I didn't die a single time in this section here, which really surprised me because of the infection form wave that spawns on the bridge. It's similar to earlier, but I somehow managed it this time on my first try. The final run isn't awful. Again, you can watch it in the video description if you want, but for this video, we're on to the next level. At the start of Keys, you can see that having the skull that raises enemy awareness of me makes camo useless. It never worked a single time in the whole challenge. I played around with the infinitely spawning flood here for a second, before jumping down into the only difficult outdoor section in the game. I think you could understand why. It's very cramped in here. There are guys spawning above me and on different levels, spawning behind me. It's just a rough time. It did have the best Skyrim giant moments, though. I slog through the first few waves, and in this pool there are a bunch of flood down there and... Oh, now this is where it's at. Nothing can get me up here. Okay, maybe I need to be careful. So I am, and I walk all the way to the end and... Okay, even more careful. Perfect. I get down to the grav lift and wait to get beamed up. And I'm not allowed to skip. So, now I have a checkpoint down here, but I need to go back and restart the scripting for the level. But this cliff is in the way. Like I said though, I've gotten good at this shit, so I do this jump first try and start making my way back. Well, oh my god, okay. Going back on foot is tough. I get up the cliff and die like four more times before I spot this different jump. I get that one first try too, and I'm feeling real good. So after that fun half an hour diversion up and around the cliffs, we are now back at the same encounter that we just skipped earlier. I slog my way through and make it back to the first shorter cliff that I rocketed up. I look down to spot any enemies and... yep, that's a lot of them. So the termite nest up there is hard to get rid of, so I just need to jump down the cliff and hope they didn't spawn sticking out enough to shoot me. I'm finally back at the gravelift encounter, but now there is just one group that is just kicking my ass. A lot of them spawn up there, and if I miss any of them, they'll be able to shoot me once I start the gravelift encounter, which requires all of my focus. This means I'll need to take a new approach to this part. I find a third different jump out of this crevice that I get on the first try again that lets me get up to the grav lift on the other side. Now I can activate the encounter without spawning the guys on the cliff. This finally lets me get back into the ship after a two and a half hour outdoor adventure, filled with a lot of flying. The ship part is pretty boring, but I do have to mention the encounter after the keys cutscene. It wasn't too bad because you can stray far enough away from the back wall to not die to splash damage. Then, you just need to hit your shots and not let any of them live long enough to get to you. 
I make my way to the Banshee and to the final level in the game. We start off dunking on some flood down this hole. I remember getting actually scared by this flood's leg. I make it to the bridge in no time. I get a checkpoint in this room, and this room is the only room I will get checkpoints in until I get to the engine room. So, I struggle with this area because the wall flood issue was near its peak. I would run out of ammo here before the leak stopped. But eventually, I got it and made it into the cryo chamber. This room was going to be tough, but I didn't get a checkpoint. The next time I made it there, I walked back to this room, and I got the checkpoint again. Neat. I spend half an hour or so cleaning up the cryo chamber, and then make it to this hallway encounter. This was also going to be tough, and I also didn't get a checkpoint again. But the next time I made it here, I walked back to this room again, and it seems like I found an infinite checkpoint. After making it through the hallway, I get to the vent section, I go back for another checkpoint. Then I make it through the vent and finally to the engine room. I was worried about this because I read that there were infinite spawns in this section, but I believe the sentinels in this section don't hurt the player and only shoot the flood. Either way, even if that's not true, the guys up here were docile, and the ones below weren't smart enough to get up to the top. So it was actually really easy. I clear out the elevator, and make it to the Warthog Run. Alright. Here we go. This is impossible. I will just say it. I don't think you can do this. Look at this. That doesn't mean I'm not gonna try, though. Announcing something some of you have wanted... Yeah. So I am willing to show off why I think this is impossible on stream. Impossible at least for me. Because also, I will show off the absurdly slim possible solution that could exist with months of grinds. Yes, I know this means I failed the challenge, but come on. Look at this. <laughs> like, think of the absurdity of going past literally hundreds of Rocket Flood in a Warthog in five minutes. It's just ridiculous. Anyway, come to my channel on Friday, the 30th of September, and hang out while I die a lot. Thank you everybody for watching this video, and I'll see you all in Halo Reach.